Hello. Hello, everybody. So, oh, oh, she's breezy out here. We are in Tullamore today. We've come all the way down to Tullamore. We, I, there, we? we do. Normally, we're here for shows <laughs> and stuff, but actually, we're here because of a show. Yeah. Met yeah. a guy. We're at, I can't, don't know if you can see it away over there, but it's the JF Centre in Tullamore. And um, we're chatting with Paul and Cowler, it'd be warmer if we were inside here. <laughs> we would have gone out of the rain. We, um, we're chatting to Alan, who's down there. How you going, Hi, Alan? Uh, we'll be down the wee second here. We're just, <laughs> we're just telling the camera what's going on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, chatting to Alan before and uh, he says that he would love to get involved with us. He works with JFs, he takes old JFs, tunes them up into new JFs, basically that's the way I'm going to word Keeps it. He alive. sells JFs, he sells parts, he sells, he can tell us all of that. But the bottom line, he heard we were doing a wee bit of charity work and he said he'd love to give us a JF, let you guys see what he does and let us run. And the only stipulation I had, I said, but. We've had new JS before. We want the old traditional Coke can and wheels. So he said he had a real surprise for us. So let's go and see what's in store. <laughs> wow. Welcome lads to Offaly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is as close we're allowed to do as a handshake. So How you going? How you doing? <laughs> These today's times, the, the sanitizer yeah, is no there problem. for us all. And, uh... no. No. Give her a wee rub. Rub a dub dub. Yeah. You can't be too careful, bud. That's the way life is. So, Alan, well done, uh, adjust this. And Gary, and then me. <laughs> we were talking. We said um, we were doing a wee bit for charity. You said you wanted to support us in our ever do charity, but also get out there. This is ours, and this I do know. Mm -hmm. But what exactly is this? This is quite an old. 1100 JF Harvester. She's 1998, as best guess as we can do. But we made a few tweaks. Now, when just you say a few tweaks. A few tweaks, just to make it good, have fun. We put in a 1360 drum into it, which should leave lots and lots more blast. We've changed the feed roller alignment up to 1360 alignment. Um, we put on a crop roller on the front and we put on a few new pipes and a little bit of extra paint and all that's very nice to make it look pretty. And new heavier shafting and a bit longer spout, just in case you wobble up there. You know, you never know, you, you could be a little wobbly at this stage. <laughs> just to make it a bit easier for the side filling. And uh, that's really what we've done to her. <laughs> but it's not really an 1100 then. Well, it's still 1100 because it says there it's 1100. I mean, it's not really an 1100. <laughs> but it, the problem is, we don't know what to call it. it <laughs> Do we call it Al's Mongrel? <laughs> 1150. 1150. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> right, talk us around this baby then because it's, it, it's, it's very fascinating. So we hitch it up. Hitch Great it up. job. I actually love, I rather have pick up hitch because okay. I think it's safer, way yep. safer than going with a drop of pin. So we actually changed them over at all to pick up pitch because it's a safer way of doing it, in my opinion, but everyone's different. Stick on a heavier shaft here. That's directly from AMA and it's a 190 or 200 horsepower wide angle shaft. So good hefty, hefty shaft on the front of it. Back from there, we put in the heavier shaft. Is that the icy bus connectors there? <laughs> oh, that's definitely icy bus. There was a lot of icy buses in, in these things in their time. The power beyond got lost uh, beyond over there, but it'll come back in time. But uh, that's a uh, heavier shaft inside in that, um, just to take the extra bit of horsepower, heavier bearings. So you've run a heavier shaft yes. right, up. right upper? Right up the, it's basically over 1050. Oh, 1050 had okay. the heavier shaft, so we stuck it out and put it into it. And th that came standard on the Mark II, the heavier power shaft there. Uh -huh. And the Mark II had the heavier um, Comer gearbox to take yes. the horses. Is this new? Or was that on them? What, did they have the, the very, very, very last of the Mark IIs had a hydraulic drawbar. And this one actually had it. That came on factory fitted, but the ram wasn't on it when we got it. So we put the ram onto it and piped it in and made it nice and looking pretty. You know, you're, you've heard I don't like a lot of hassle. 
<laughs> well, we had an awful hassle with the, the, the Pottinger one time trying to get it in the field. Do you remember that? <laughs> well, just in case you narrow <laughs> gaps, you can, you can fiddle it now on the hydraulics without getting down. So, you may come out round here because I want to keep, I want okay. to keep in, the, in the swing right. of the yoke. So, R and F, that's obviously, I'm just going to, that's reversing forward. Correct. And that's age old JF. Hasn't changed since time began. Basically, a little actuator, electric ram. You pull it from the cab, pull a switch in the cab. That's the little electric actuator. And as you can see, it's not painted. It's the original one that came on it all those years ago. It's still there. We've tested it to make sure it's working, so you're okay. And how does she work when she's about 300 horse with a lump wedged in her somewhere? If you have 300 horses, I think it'd be the best thing you could do is switch off the PTO quick, because you have a lot of horses. <laughs> Um, and if you switch off the, the PTO and get the revs completely off on the harvester, then when it's stopped, and then pull that down into reverse and put your tractor into 540, especially when you're that kind of horsepower. And then you'll put, switch on the PTO again, it'll be turning out so slowly, it'll put the lump back. And Alan, is that not a golden tip for no matter what horsepower you have? Yes. If you don't want to be paying me Big books every time see. you melt a, a rubber wheel. You see, this that's is a good the, tip. This is where the problem comes from, right? Because he doesn't want you to know that because he wants to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, guy? We, we were, burst, we're bursting this man here. We're bursting him. <laughs> but no, seriously, that is your golden tip. Get the, get the drive off it straight away because ultimately all you're doing is going up against a rubber, a rubber wheel and melting it. And if, you, and if you can be stopped and go into 540, you're getting the speed down, you're connecting. And if you haven't, like, because we, we, first, we first talked, our, some of our older tractors we have, like the Big Massey or the, the old John Deere or, or the Magnum, well, they're in that 200 to 240 category. Mm -hmm. But they're old school. But they have power. They have power. And, but they don't have 540s. It'll still work, but so get, long as stop it. Stop, stop it. it. Get yeah. her down. And then start it on your tractor and it will work and it will work well. You have a lot of chains in here. Yes and no. There's 10 metres of chain. In total, is that all there is? That's all there is on a JF harvester is 10 metres, which is two rolls of chain. A roll of chain is 100 euro. It's not expensive to change a roll of chain every year. And, and how keep... often would you su suggest changing the chain? If I was doing... Six, seven, eight hundred acres a year, anything around that. I'd change all my chains every year to make sure I don't have hassle when I start off to do the next six or seven or eight hundred acres. It's cheap motoring at the end of the day, isn't it? Oh, I don't like being changing and messing with chains in the field. If I can do my messing in the workshop, it's a much better place to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, that leads us to the back then. <laughs> okay, to the work end. So like 10 that. meters of chain's not that much really, no, it's Gary, not, it's when not. you think about it. So we're into the big bit. Now, I'm no JF expert, I'm going to tell you 100% the honest truth. I think it's around about to do with my era. My era was the rise of the Mech 6s and the 40 Mingellis, in my humble opinion. Um, I don't know why that was, but there was a, there seemed to be a disappearance of JF around that time. I suppose I'm sitting there. We're pushing 40 now, let's be honest, Gary. I'm pushing a wee bit more than you. <laughs> but I, am I right or am I wrong? For a wee while, the big JFs disappeared, as in the 1100 went off the market. They didn't bring out Anton for a short while on the bigger JFs. The 900s kept selling around here, like Billio. They were given out with lucky bags, I think, because there was that money in them sold. <laughs> they sold and sold very well. The 1100 seems to stop. But then I think, but I'm not an expert, it's what JF came up with. They obviously seen the market was disappearing for them and they brought out the 1350. And that kept up with your Mingalays and, and the other things. Yeah, yeah. But they never just took off in Ireland. No. The 900 was the machine Everywhere. that people had. And when they, they left the 900, that's what they did do. They moved to those flywheel type harvester. But going back on to this harvester, so she must be because she's, I'm just, I don't know if the camera can get right down on it and see it, but it's the Comer bed, or Comer bed, Comer gearbox. 
and uh, it used to be JF before that. It is a good few years now. You're showing your age that you can remember the old JF gearbox, but yes, the JF gearbox came on them first. They changed over to Comer a long, long time ago. The exact year, I'm not sure. Yeah. But they never look back. But that effectively is the same gearbox still running on your 1060s. 1260s. And 1260s, yeah. isn't it? Only there, there, yeah. There's more of them. There's two of them. <laughs> for want of a better word, because the 1060 that we had in our two legends and a donkey, I'm pretty sure runs a, runs the same gearbox. And pretty that, much. There, there, about. I mean, it's going to have its wee changes. And she's increasing the drive by 12%. So for every turn there, you get an extra eighth of a turn on this side. So again, increased drum speed. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was one yeah. of the reasons they changed up to Comer from the original She's gearing JF. it up slightly. Not much, but still yeah. every bit made a big difference to the drum. So the big difference between the 1260 that we would have had, that we really liked, mm -hmm. would have been that she was using two gearboxes. Correct. And none of this in between bit. Really. They got rid of all the chains and the sprockets. It's just two big, gear two big gearboxes was doing all. Is right. that a good thing or is that a bad thing for you? For me, it means there's very little for me to make money out of. If there's nothing left, there's no chains to buy, there's no sprockets to buy. But it's a great machine. I could never run down to 1260, a great, great machine. So it seems to me when we had it out and we loved it, we were putting on. We were, when we were left in a lot of stuff with that machine, but the price of it was scary. It is. There's no two ways about it, it's a ridiculous price. I think it's what leads to what I'm doing here is very cost effective to upgrade machines and you can get a machine out of here for 20 grand and it can keep up with that machine at 20,000 euros at 80,000, 80 plus yeah. of a 1260. And that's really part of where you have modeled your business. We're working on the base to try and keep the prices reasonable. But the basics is drive line down, gearbox, 90 degree turn, and then we're heading into drum. the drum. Direct. And on the way to the drum, <laughs> we have our pulleys, our belts, and then everything else is coming off that in one shaft. So what's the weak link here? I mean, I'm going to imagine these belts, possibly. I really believe it is the cheapest form of slip clutch. It is a great slip clutch to have the belts there, that it's much easier. Every machine has to have something that'll give. If you've got a big silly lump comes in, I don't care what it is, uh, you're going to break something if you don't have something that'll give eventually. The more horsepower you put in front, the bigger the lump. Something's going to give eventually. You have to have a slip clutch. Slip clutches are great, but they cost a lot and they're a bit of time messing with them. Belts are very cheap. They slip and you put them in reverse and just pull it back again and go on again. Hey, Gary. Make sure and grab a couple of belts. Mm. Okay. Yeah. We might need them. Need a wee service package with her. I think we... <laughs> I definitely a couple of belts now. We gave you a little lucky bag there at the front. <laughs> Grab a couple more, son. <laughs> <laughs> and that is basically the essence. Gearbox, mm. the best slip clutch in the world. Oh, she's well adjusted. <laughs> yeah. We know you guys. <laughs> and she's straight into this new drum. Yes. 30 blade, 1360 drum. Oh, 30 blade? 30 blade. I thought it was 24. There's 24 in the 1060s when you went into the 1160s, 1360s, a 30 blade or 40. You can get 30 or 40. And what's the difference? The difference in whenever we had the new type drum, um, JF or Conskelde, actually, I must give them the correct name at the time. It was the angle of cut was changed something like six degrees, and that's what gave it a better blow. That's part of it, it's certainly a very important part of it. But they also made much bigger holes on the outside of the drum to allow more air to come so in. So she sucked more air She in. was able to suck more air and right into the middle of the drum, they made holes in the middle of the drum so it goes right into the centre and they have heavier, heavier blocks. Creating so draft, really. Creating the draft, creating the blast. It's really a chimney, in effect, isn't mm -hmm. it? You're wanting the draw up the... Up but how come the she doesn't have... Like... All your flywheel type harvesters have wee holes for reaching in that I can't get my arm into to whenever you block it, but she's like open from the bottom up. 
Well, if you drive it right, you won't block it. And if there's it's enough blast, unblocked. It, it'll slow out. It'll go but out. Yeah, it's not renowned for blast, let's be honest. The new one. The, the, you won't be lacking in this. But one. they're not. I'm. I'm. I'm not being. I'm not telling any f stories there. The, the 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 JF. I mean the 1100 when it was original. Yes. Not with Alan from JF <laughs> Centers <laughs> tweaks. They wouldn't have been great blowing. I'll machines. be the first to admit that they had. They were a very wide drum, and you were trying to bring grass into a very narrow amount, and they hadn't enough blast to do it to blow it up where the 900s was a much narrower on the bottom and was able to bring it in. So yeah. Very, very, very good technology. So then, sharpening? A simple angle grinder? No angle grinders are allowed. I know you like them, but they're better left on the bench. Seriously? Seriously. Way better now, because you'll never get the right angle on your blade if you use an angle grinder sharpen your blade. How do I sharpen the blade? Like, guy, pay very close attention. Here, so, so we want to sharpen <laughs> the blade. You're a harvester, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Where'd Alan go? <laughs> you pull out two simple little R clips. They're very, very serious technology. You've probably seen them before. Mm -hmm. And you just do that, and you let down the cross. And that exposes your blades. They're very easily seen. Mm -hmm. See them all in there, and you can see where we have little bits of green paint on the nuts and bolts. Because every time we tighten the bolt, we spray it, because we tighten it with a torque bar and we spray it, so we can never miss a bolt. No matter how old the machine is, we use the spray can to know when we tighten the bolt. So, with that bit done, now you want... You have the drum going in reverse. It's very hard technology. Pull that across, wind it down, until it starts going tick, 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 and pull it nice and gently across and back. That will put the correct angle on your blades for the best blast you can possibly get. How, and once you get the tick, 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 mm. how many pulls would you do on, on, on not, you haven't, you're not trying to take something out of it, you're not trying to wear a, a chip just out a of it, you're just trying to give it a nice sharp. About three pulls across, nice and easy. Three nice and easy nice pulls. And pulls across. And would you, you know, if you're, if you're chopping, What's a good day's chop with one of those, say, 40 acres a day? Mm. If you're doing that sort of 40 acres a day for a few days, one wee sharpen per day? That's all it requires. So how long have you been doing this? I started working on JFs when I was actually having fun in RF Coltons many, many, many years trying to be a common mechanic, which I tried. Uh, we've been contracting all my life. I've been working JFs for at least 35 years. Wow. So we've, we've been contracting all my life, all my father's life, and my grandfather's life. So we're contracting over 100 years. So you do a bit of contracting as well. It's not yeah. just It's JF. not just, just AF. And then it, one thing led to another. I used to be fixing. Is that what that pot in Jamaica 6 right in the corner there is for? If you're able to see one, I think you may test your glasses because you won't <laughs> find one around. <laughs> or maybe get a set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, JF only. But your 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 JF of choice for your own contracting business, if I am right in saying, is a 1060. Yes. You like that harvester? She's a sweet nut. She's very very. Funny, we did we did as well. There's no question about that. And with some lovely footage of that work. And you know, the only thing I would have said probably on a slightly negative side to it, and I'm probably going to get blasted for this. I would nearly have said this shoot was too long. I will totally agree with you. It's nearly too far. Because the chute is so long, it's putting a huge amount of pressure onto its mountings off down here. Yes. Lovely on the road because it falls down, so there's no problem on the road. But when you're in a rough field, and especially if you're not doing 20 foot or 30 foot to keep the, the speed down, that's a long, long lump of steel, and it, it is very hard on the machine. A little bit less might have been just a bit easier on the chassis yeah, yeah, yeah. and where it's yeah. mounted. Just for me, it just felt too long for it even filling, being nice. Just was nearly, I just don't know. But anyway, this here looks a good size. That is my little bit of an extension in the middle that we came up with a good many years ago and I've sold them all around Ireland and the UK everywhere. And it increases the length by two and a half feet. It rises it by about a foot and a half and it's relatively inexpensive. Yeah, Relatively. Will she, will, she, will she manage it, do you think, guy? Uh, Anti what? The big one. 
Paul. The K2. Aye. So. With a say with a grey crab off. Bob. With a grey crab off, yeah, she would. Yeah. She'll go in yeah. over your K2. With a grey crab. And if she off. doesn't, the four balls there, you just open them and you can actually angle it up another bit. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've left the angles on it, but you can oh, actually yeah. rise it up another See little that. bit and uh, the bars will, will lengthen out with you. Uh -huh. And you can get an extra little bit if, uh -huh. if, uh -huh. if, if. Uh -huh. so I'd be uh -huh. very surprised. Slaughter. Is that right? That's, that's for tightening the spout if yeah. it gets shaky, the yeah. spots there. So she's a brand new uh, spout dog. ring in it. They're like everybody in Ireland had one of those. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, intake. Big thing in a JF is intake. The 1100 over time was the biggest that JF made. Bear in mind that's 22 years, years ago as we're standing here. Yes. It was the biggest of her day. It was the, thir it was the 1460 of her time. Mm -hmm. So she was designed for 210 horsepower, which would be the 49, 55, 47, 55, 36, 90. The track, a few of the old tractors that we have of that era, they were the biggest you got. That's what that was designed for. What can you tell me about the intake? Are we going to have to worry about the intake? Is it, is it like yesterday's technology or will it work? Well, it is. Essentially, yesterday's technology, but it hasn't changed a whole lot, even to this day. We're still talking about an auger, a few small things. The same tines is on it to this day on, on the harvesters. The same reel system is in it with the same bushings, even on your 1360. The same cam bearings and cam is on your 1360, 1460. But um, it's a 2.1 meter reel. It's not as wide as the one you're going to have on a 1360. No, but that was a big reel in its day. That was a big reel in its day. That's a wide machine. It is. She's one of the drawbacks of this machine on the road. She's a wide baby. She's 10 foot wide from wheel to wheel. Plus the, this sticks out another little bit on the road. So you are wide on the road and you just have to be careful. Hence we put on that strip on them, on them all. It's just something we put on them all. It just helps a little. But is it hard to take the reel off? No. If you're on concrete, it's very simple. It is one R clip there, that pin, mm -hmm. let off your spring, because that's on a spring, so just to let the reel down, and then two more pins underneath, that safety bar there that stops the head from going too high, and one chain. And you can walk it with that bar, one man can walk it round on concrete, and walk it back in. It's very quick attached, it's very easy to do. It's still something I wouldn't be doing too often yeah, in the field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd be trying to keep it on. Yeah. And then, yes, we have the new drum in there, but then the 1100 denotes the width yes. of the feed rollers. The width of the feed rollers, correct. And the width of the drum. And the width of the drum. So it's 1100 mil? Yes. Makes it very easy. That's and the like 900 is? The 900 mil? Yeah. Where the 1050 came out, I don't know. But like... <laughs> What is that? 1050 a thousand? She, uh, she no, she's her... the same width as the 900. The 1050, well, 1060 is still... Yeah, that's right, a change. Okay. You know, but it's funny there because you take your big self propels, none of them are running really 1100 mil no. width drum. Sure they're not. No. Like your 630 crone that we had was 630 mil. Uh, yeah. Still gets a few acres through it a day. Oh yeah, oh, no problem to that machine. <laughs> and then as far as controls, how do we control it? Keeps it very simple. Two actuators, two electric rams, one for the flap up there, and one for the reverse. Mm -hmm. And the rest is ordinary standard hydraulic. There's a hydraulic ram for letting it in and out. There's a hydraulic ram for turning the spout, and one hydraulic ram for lifting the pickup. Plug the pipes into your tractor. No major technology, all pretty simple. And one little control box for the actuators, and then plug it into your electrics. So many spools do we really need them? We need two, two ways, and one, and one single way. So you need three sets. Reel. And no, and a return? No. No, no you don't no need return. a return. No. She's proper. Mm -hmm. She's old school technology, it's uh, very simple. Yeah, yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. So well, look. control box is really just working your... Your flap. Flap on the reverse. Yeah, like... Hopefully, you're never going to need to reverse it. So the control box is just working the flap. And if you have really good draw guys drawn in, you won't even need to move the flap. Hmm. 
Which I assume you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do all the work. So the guy in the yeah. harvester does nothing. He's just there for the, for He's the there fun just of there it. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very hard. <laughs> well, look, Alan, thank you very much for showing us around the harvester. Um, I suppose we'll let uh, Gary get it loaded here now somehow. I don't know how you load that. Oh, that's fine. That's awesome. We get that bit sorted. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever bring you the last bit of the behind the back? <laughs>